Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be talking about getting into competitive Pokemon. This video is meant for more casual players who have thought about getting into competitive before, but maybe there are certain things that stop them from really getting into it. Uh, whatever it may be, um, I'm here to give my experience as a former casual only Pokemon player into a casual and competitive Pokemon player. So getting into Pokemon. I don't know the exact age, but I was very young, and Pokemon Yellow was one of my very first video games in general. Uh, I'm very appreciative of it, um, very grateful for it, because I always thought it was a great game to play as a kid. Uh, I always thought that it actually helped me throughout school because of the things I had to learn in Pokemon. You know, um, I thought of it as advanced rock, paper, scissors. Fire beats grass, grass beats water, water beats fire, but then there's a bunch more types after that. I was a very big fan of Pokemon as a kid, and you know, I just kind of fell in love with the franchise. My favorite Pokemon game is Pokemon Emerald. I'm just a really big fan of Generation 3. Um, I think it's because even though Pokemon Yellow was my first game, I was still kind of young, so I was still young when I played Pokemon Emerald, but I was a bit older, I could probably like, you know, play Pokemon a bit better, I was probably like, a little smarter, um, can memorize things a bit better, I probably remembered my experiences more, so that's the one that truly holds the, the nostalgia for me, and that's why Pokemon Emerald is my favorite. I didn't find out about competitive Pokemon until Pokemon XY, I was in high school and I was playing with my friend and he wanted to do battles. And he was talking about things like EV training and like just Pokemon natures. And I had no idea what he was talking about. Like I actually didn't even know that natures before affected your Pokemon stats. I was just always playing leveling up my Pokemon. And after I played with him, I don't think I won a single battle. I even did multi battles with other friends and I was never on the winning team. So I then realized that there was this whole aspect of competitive Pokemon. And it was hard. And that was a big reason why I just didn't want to play competitive Pokemon. I thought this is way too complicated. All of a sudden this advanced game of rock, paper, scissors became advanced 5D chess. And 5D chess is already advanced in my opinion. So I was like, oh maybe this is like way too hard for me to get into. There's too many things to learn. But honestly, even though there's a lot of things to learn. Like there is a lot of things to learn. But... Sword and Shield makes it a lot easier. So if one of the hard things is building a proper team, Sword and Shield actually has rental codes um, in the game. So you could go ahead and rent a top player's team or you could rent my team. There's the code right here. I think my team is really cool. Um, I could go ahead and make a video explaining how to use it if you'd like. Or if you join my Discord, watch my Twitch streams, you could go ahead and like figure out how I use it and I could talk about it there. Follow my Twitch though. Like and subscribe to this video as well. I'm going to put it in the middle of the video instead of at the end. Just, just right now. Like and subscribe. But you can go ahead and use these codes to try out other teams if team building is a bit too difficult for you. Or if you are if you would just like to test out using other people's teams first before you want to team build. Or if you just don't have time to team build and you would like to play competitive Pokemon. You could go ahead and use other people's teams. Uh, another thing though is... If you're using other people's teams, you know, you don't get to choose your favorites. And some people don't like competitive Pokemon because some people say that, hey, you can only use these Pokemon. Or some people think that you can only use these Pokemon, the meta Pokemon, Incineroar, Landorus, Incineroar. But the thing is, you could actually play competitive Pokemon with whatever Pokemon you like. That doesn't mean you're gonna win though, that's the problem. That doesn't mean you're gonna win. It doesn't mean you'll get number one if you use whatever Pokemon you like, but you could definitely play with whatever Pokemon you like. And you probably could still go ahead and get some wins because sometimes your favorite Pokemon being an off meta pick might just help you get that one win. And if that's like how you wanna play, like feel free. Um, but, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's the best way to learn competitive Pokemon. I think learning competitive Pokemon using meta Pokemon is probably a bit better because you understand like what's good 
uh, what's consistent and I think that helps you learn Pokemon. When you do your first couple of battles, see what works, see what doesn't work, and you know, go on from there. If you want to learn about EVs first, then learn about EV training. Learn about IVs after. Like, take it little by little. Like, yeah, there's stuff you gotta learn. It's not as simple as, boom, here you go, and now you're good. But that's like a lot of things. You gotta take things little by little. If you're playing a fighting game, you don't just learn um, about combos right away. You have to learn how the game works. So you got, you have to learn how competitive Pokemon works as well. And for some people, maybe it really is just not for you. But for others who maybe thought, oh, you know, this is too hard, I would say this is actually a good time to learn. Because like I said, Sword and Shield has a lot of quality of life features. At the same time, there's a lot of Pokemon content creators out there. So this is probably like the best time to get into competitive Pokemon. And like I said, if you would like to learn more from me or like talk more about it, feel free to join my Discord or um, follow my Twitch streams. Um, I play Pokemon from time to time and I always like talking to people who are trying to get into competitive Pokemon there. So even after learning more about competitive Pokemon, I'm actually very happy that I could still enjoy Pokemon casually. It's a game where where there's a lot of different ways to play Pokemon. You know, some people like the Pokemon games for the story, so that's why they may like the previous generations a bit more than Sword and Shield. Some people only like competitive Pokemon, so they might really like Sword and Shield because it really helps you get into it a lot faster. There's a lot of different ways to play Pokemon, but if you're the type of person who has been a bit scared to join competitive Pokemon because you were like me and thought it was too hard, or man, I have to use only these Pokemon, I want to use like my favorite. Um, don't be scared and don't like, don't think you can't play comp competitive Pokemon because everyone can play. Everyone can play competitive Pokemon. Like that's a fact. Now, can everyone be the best at it? Probably not, you know. There, there are some top players, there are some not as good players. But it doesn't mean anything if you're like not that great in the beginning, you know. Play to learn, play to have fun. And yeah, you know, I I was probably like very bad the first time I played, but I have gotten better and better each season. And I have changed like how I play, what Pokemon I use, what types of teams I like to build. But in the end, like, I would just like to say, hey, you can be a Pokemon master. And by that, I mean, you could be a competitive Pokemon player because I'm not guaranteeing you're going to be number one. But you know what? You, you watching this video, you will be number one, one day. At least one of you watching this video. Thank you for watching.